What happens if you sin right after God's blessed you? Hey everybody, this is Pastor Justin Walker with The Whole Truth. We're going through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation, and I want you to come along with me. How do you do it? Grab a Bible, subscribe to the channel, turn that Bible open to Genesis chapter 26. We're in the story of Isaac. We're refocusing back in on Isaac. We've gone through Genesis. Abraham had Isaac. We've seen Isaac at 60 years old with his wife, Rebecca, has uh, Jacob and Esau twins. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. Now we refocus the story back to Isaac. And today we're going to see a couple of things, several things that are very similar in the life of Isaac that were similar to his father, Abraham. Look, it's Genesis 26, verse 1. There was a famine in the land. Now, in case you're thinking that happened with Abraham, is this the same famine? Well, just in case you're confused, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. So there's a famine in the land, not the same one in the days of Abraham. But look, this is why God was being so specific about that, because uh, we're uh, in verse 1 here, and God, uh, excuse me, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Okay, so Isaac was literally following the footsteps of his father Abraham. There's a famine in the land, and so he was going to go down into Egypt. Isaac was living in the promised land, in the land of promise that God had swore to uh, to Abraham, his father. He was living there, but he started to move his way down towards Egypt because of a famine. Uh, Abraham did the exact same thing. Well, let's look here in verse uh, the middle of verse 2. God said, do not go down into Egypt, but listen, Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you for you and your descendants. I will give all these lands. I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give your seed all the nations of the earth, uh, excuse me, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Wow. God just said to Isaac the very same promise that he said to his father, Abraham. Abraham had Isaac. God promised Abraham three things, the land, a nation that was going to come from him, and that through that nation, through his seed, all nations of the world would be blessed. That is, the Messiah would come through him. Isaac now receives the same promise from God. Isaac is well into his, he's well past 60. His sons are old enough to uh, go out and hunt and to make their own food. And so they're at least in their teens, if not in their 20s. So that would place Isaac somewhere around the nature of, what, 75 years old or more? And God says the same promise to Isaac at 75 that he gave to Abraham when Abraham was what? About 75 years old. We saw the same promise, the land, descendants, a great nation, and that all nations would be blessed. So God is giving Isaac the exact same promise. Can you imagine the mountaintop experience to have God give you this promise and tell you that all nations of the world are going to be blessed by your seed, by your children, by your descendants, that you're going to have a great nation that comes from your descendants, that you're going to own all of this land. He says, all of the land. Don't go down into Egypt because I'm going to give you all of the land. What a wonderful blessing. But look at what happens. This is now verse six. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked about his wife, and he said, Oh my, she is my sister. For he was afraid to say she is my wife, because he thought, Lest the men of the place kill me for Rebecca, because she is beautiful to behold. We saw Abraham do this same thing twice over. One time he even did it to Abimelech. Now some commentators want to say that this Abimelech is different than the other Abimelech that we saw with Abraham. I see no reason to say that this is not the same Abimelech. The only reason that you could give me is that this Abimelech doesn't directly reference Abraham, Isaac's father. Uh, that's the only thing you could say to me to say, well, maybe it's not the same Abimelech. But I sure think it seems like it's the same Abimelech to me. Uh, they lived such long lives back then, you know, well into their hundreds, that there's no reason to think that this couldn't be the same Abimelech. Well, yeah, Isaac went to Abimelech, and now he's going to kind of stay in the land because God told him to. So he's in Gerar, and the men ask about his wife, and he says the same as Abraham said, 
She is my sister. Why? Because he was afraid that these people would kill him because they wanted his wife. He was just promised by God to have the land, descendants, and that all nations of him were going to, through him were going to be blessed. And what did he do? The very next thing we see, he tells an outright lie and he sins. He takes matters into his own hands because he's fearful, because he's not trusting the way that he should, and he sins. And I started this video with this and I'm asking it again. What do what what happens if you sin right after God has blessed you? Well, I want you to think of a few things. Can you think of, I'm asking you this, think of this. Can you think of other times in the Bible that you have seen someone sin right after God has blessed them? I'll give you an example, but if you think of one besides me, put it down in the comments. But here's an example for you. What about Peter? Remember Peter? Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And the disciples were answering and, and they said, well, some say you're, uh, you're this and some say you're Elias and so on. And, and uh, Jesus said, no, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus, the son of God, said to Peter, blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not given this to you, right? He said, he said, blessed are you. And he says, upon this rock, not upon Peter the rock, no, upon this rock, Christ the rock, the this confession of faith that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And then in the very next scene, Peter is yapping at Jesus and Jesus has to say, get behind me. Get behind me, Satan. What happens when, when we sin right after we have been blessed? I mean, think about it. How about Peter again, when it came to Jesus sitting there at the last supper? Had the had the uh, the Last Supper with Jesus, broke the bread with Jesus, drank the wine with Jesus. This is my body. This is my blood that is shed for you. This is my body that is broken for you. And that very night, Peter is denying Jesus. Before the the rooster crows in the morning, Peter denied Jesus three times, and he ran off weeping. What happens when we sin right after God has blessed us? Well, I have wonderful news for you. God doesn't retract his blessings. He doesn't retract his forgiveness because we've sinned. He offers his forgiveness because we are sinners. Did you get that? He offers his forgiveness because we are sinners. Look with me in your Bible. Turn it over to 1 John. Look at 1 John. I know some of you are like, I know right where he's going. I know you know where I'm going, but turn there anyways. Look at 1 John. And in 1 John, I want you to look at the first chapter and the ninth verse. So 1 John chapter 1 and verses 9 and 10. Read this with me. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Look at chapter two, same book. First John chapter two, verse one. My little children, these things I write to you so that you sin not. And if anyone sins, he has an advocate with the father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. What happens when we sin after God has blessed us? What happens when you've gone to church and then you sin? What happens when you went to a revival and you heard Billy Graham preach and then you went out later that night and you sinned even that night? What happens when you sin right after you got baptized? I know that. I know that one firsthand. Someone calling me, they were baptized and then they sinned even the same day and were devastated by it. Friends, listen to the word of God. If we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. Look what happens. Go back to Genesis 26 and look what happens with the story with Abimelech. Uh, so we're in verse nine. Uh, I'm sorry, verse eight. Now it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing endearment to Rebekah, his wife. Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, "Quite obviously, she is your wife. So why could you say she? So how could you say she is my sister?" And Isaac said to him, "Because I because uh, because I said, lest I die." 
on account of her. And Abimelech said, what is this that you have done to us? One of the people might have uh, might soon have lain with your wife and, and would have brought guilt on us. So Abimelech charged all his people saying, he who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Abimelech finds out, he looks out the window and he sees him and, and Isaac is caught. He's seen with his wife, Rebecca. He's showing her endearment. Um, he's obviously in love with her. And the men of the city can see it. Abimelech sees it for himself. And he says, obviously, she's your wife. Why'd you say this? And Isaac had to fess up to what he had done. Rest assured this as well, and I'll close with this today, that your sin will find you out. You don't get to live in your sin forever. Eventually, your sin will find you out. Confess it. Show Je- tell Jesus that you are sorry. Confess it to him. Trust him for his forgiveness because he forgives us even when we've sinned after he's blessed us. He's faithful He's faithful to forgive us if we will confess. Have you confessed your sins to him today? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow with more of Genesis chapter 26.